Hi, it's Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today we've not got a Christmas card. I thought we'd take a little break from Christmas and I have got a card for men for you. And this is a hunky dory card, but again, it's not one done as a hunky dory design team member. It's just one from my stash. I just thought this was a really nice set. I think they do a lot of these kind of card sets. So even if you can't get this specific one, you'll be able to get something similar. So hopefully you enjoy and let's get crafting so first of all as you can see we've got two pieces of adorable scorable patterned cardstock I've taken one of them and I'm folding it in half to create an A5 card now if you're not comfortable just folding directly without scoring then just make a little fold at the top just so you know where to, to score because A5 is quite a fiddly size because it's not a precise measurement and then you can score it in line with that little mark but with adorable scorable you can get away with doing it just as I did there then I'm taking the second piece of card and again because it's fiddly to cut it to size all I'm doing is I'm going to put some adhesive on the front of my card base that we just created and then I'm going to stick the second piece of card over the top of the card base as a whole so it's got like an A4 piece of card going over the front and then we'll cut that down to size once the glue has set. I've used a wet glue here because it gives me a little bit of movement time and it's quite heavy cardstock, adorable scorables, 350 GSM and so that's very heavy cardstock so I wanted a really nice strong glue however because it's coated you need to give it some time just to uh, get the glue to go off because it takes a little bit longer for that wet glue to dry so then I'm taking my uh, topper sheet here and you can see there's a coloured version and a sepia version so obviously looking at the backgrounds that we use we're going for the sepia version and I'm just using my craft knife just to cut where the little notches are and there's uh, two frames and then the centrepiece and I'm just using the craft knife so that it just cuts through nicely and it doesn't leave any notches I think otherwise there's always a risk that you pull it wrong especially with those finer frames so now that my front piece there has uh, dried off nicely I'm just taking a nice pair of big scissors and cutting that down to size and you can see we've got the lovely car on the front just in that beautiful sepia tones and I just thought it was something a bit different rather than going for colour so then we're taking this stamp set from creative expressions and as always I will put a list of everything as best I'm able to because the hunky dory probably doesn't exist specifically anymore so you may have to look for something similar rather than the precise one but anyway as best as I can I will put down the, um, a list with links for you so anyway as I say I'm taking these stamps and I'm stamping out my sentiment just on a piece of scrap cream card that I had and I'm using the gorgeous I love this uh, ink it's the Versafine it's just so good for sentiments it really does work well for that now you can see I'm just wiping the black off the little tail of my happy there because it was overlapping the anniversary just because of what I want to do which is die cut it out I needed it not to be too long so I needed the happy to go up nice and close to the word anniversary and by doing that I also needed it not to be too deep so I couldn't lift it up higher so that I could get the swirl in so I decided just to remove it by taking a little damp baby wipe and just wiping that off so then I'm putting my lovely uh, flag that's my Sue Wilson uh, flags and I'm just die cutting that out and you can see it's got the lovely little pierced edging to it so then we're going back now to the front of the card and we're working on our main topper and the little frames that go with it so for my main topper I've put a layer of square foams in the middle and then for the bigger of the two frames I'm putting um, some foams just around the edges that I used the bigger foams but I cut them in half and they fitted perfectly for that and then for the fine gold frame I'm using my construction glue here which is just that wet glue once it goes off it really sticks nice but it just again gives you a little bit of movement time and this is the one you need the movement on because this is going flat onto the card and I need 
once they get one right in position then the rest will follow through naturally on this particular card unlike others I've done I'm going to be doing it all dead straight in the past sometimes I've taken the frames and I've given them at a bit of an angle and changed it up a bit but on this one I'm going to literally put it back together as it was in the top of sheet and as you can see I was trying to line that to, up to make sure that it would be in the right place for the big frame to be in the right place but it's sort of moved a bit but it gave me a rough idea but anyway as I say I still just thought I would keep it straight as per in the actual topper sheet so I thought that would look better so then we stick the next frame down and then I was looking at this uh, middle topper and I thought it being the same height as the main large frame it just didn't work it just it didn't give you anything different you could barely see the, the little frame and it just didn't give any interest so I added a second layer of the foam squares so then we've got three different heights they're not super deep these foam squares I think they're just a couple of mil um, and you know it just added that interest so you had the middle fine one absolutely flat then a, a next height for the big frame and then you had a even higher for the middle topper so then we stuck down my little sentiment and you can see I've just hung that over the edge and again with that I just used a single layer of the foam and then I just took my scissors and cut the excess off because I hadn't cut it to the exact size it was easier to position it and then cut it to size and then I took another little element off the sheet and popped it on the inside and then I decided to use the second half of the A4 sheet that we used on the front that had the card to cover the back. I just didn't like the back being white and also as you guys know if you've watched me frequently I don't like it when there's a lot of weight on the front and only one layer on the back so it just gives that weight difference that just doesn't really feel nice even with a cardstock as heavy as adorable scorable at 350 gsm it ends up making that back piece feel really flimsy and yet we know it isn't at that weight so then i die cut another piece of cream using that spell binders which is a very similar shape to the toppers that we had on the front so it kind of marries up there and then i stuck that on the inside just so the person has somewhere to write and then as you saw I've just been fiddling around with that little topper there just to put that in a different position and that is it that's the card done so as you saw for this one as I said I just went for a more simple look of it being all sort of married up exactly as it is in the topper no kind of odd angles but just creating that interest by adding those different heights so that's it for today a much shorter video than last week's one which was a bit of a marathon but I thought we would do something a little different not so Christmas themed just to give us a break from Christmas so I hope you've enjoyed I hope you like the finished card as always do go on across to the blog post to take a look at the photos and any links that I can put on I will do so for you also while you're there if you haven't already please do subscribe to the website and of course I would love it if you could give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed thanks so much and I will see you again soon bye for now bye